It's my privilege to welcome you to the Central Coast Local Health District Annual Memorial Service. My name's Tom Osborne. I'm one of the doctors working in the palliative care team on the Central Coast. I'm extending this welcome on behalf of all my colleagues working across the coast in different settings, visiting you in hospitals and in your homes. We hope the service provides you with the opportunity to remember, honour and reflect on the life of someone you've lost. We'd suggest watching the service in a quiet place, somewhere you find safe and comforting. Remembrance is a very personal thing, so give yourself whatever company, privacy or space you think you'll need. If watching the service causes any distress, please be kind to yourself. Do take a break or maybe choose another time to revisit the service when you're ready. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge these lands, the lands of the Darkenya. I'd like to acknowledge our ancestors who have cared for these lands for many generations. I'd like to acknowledge our Aboriginal elders, both past and present, and also acknowledge our Aboriginal youth who are our future leaders. My name is Kelly and I'm a bereavement counsellor with the Central Coast Palliative Care Service. As we celebrate the life of the person who died today, I would like to acknowledge that we all share something in common. We are connected today by the enduring grief we are experiencing. In your heart, you have come to know your deepest pain. Your grief has created chaos and presented challenges that can feel beyond your capacity to survive. As our hearts are broken and as we begin to adjust to life without the ones we love, we are bonded together by our stories of grief and loss. Whether it is the child who has lost their father or the wife who has lost their husband of many years, grief does not discriminate. It is a natural response to a loss, a whole human universal experience that links us together and can be experienced at any time. Despite us being connected by our grief today, it is important to acknowledge our experience of grief is deeply our own. Just as unique as our person was and as unique as our relationship with them was, is how unique our grief will be. The grief we now carry reflects the love we shared. As we navigate our changed life, we might encounter well-meaning friends and family who project the many myths of grief upon us. Friends and family might not know what to say, and rather than just provide space to listen, they may avoid talking about the person who has died or give us solutions and advice. Grief isn't something that can be fixed, rather you are not broken. As long as you have love in your heart for them, you will grieve. As after all, grief is an expression of love, a painful expression, yes, which can leave us feeling wounded and raw. Grief can be described like waves. As you navigate the ocean of grief, some days you might have to sail over huge crashing tidal waves where each day is about survival. Other days, it might feel like a ripple where you will experience joy as you honour their life and create new memories. As time goes on, the frequency of these waves might lessen as our hearts begin to heal. As you reflect today, there may be a range of different emotions you might experience. You might feel deep sadness. You might feel anger or be holding on to a sense of guilt. You might feel a sense of relief as you no longer see them suffer and can start to attend to your own needs now. You might be surrounded by a wonderful supportive group of people but still feel a deep sense of loneliness where you feel stuck as everyone else seems to be able to move forward. It is important to know that whatever emotion comes up for you during this time, it is normal and okay. When someone dies, the connection does not cease, rather your connection lives through the stories you tell of them and how you honour them. We don't leave deceased loved ones behind, rather we carry them with us throughout our lives. Many believe that grief lessens and becomes smaller. However, we grow around our grief, which gives it more space and life begins to grow bigger around it. As part of my work as a bereavement counsellor, I facilitate figuratively bringing the person back to life through maintaining the bond they shared when alive. This can be done through reflecting and recalling memories you shared together, through special stories, photos, songs, jokes, and meaningful possessions, or writing letters to them sharing your ups and downs, just like you may have done when they were alive. 
You can also keep connected by planning to celebrate special occasions such as their birthday or wedding anniversary and memorial services like today. For children, it can be done through drawing pictures and reflecting on their special person or creating a memory box they can open as they grow. It might feel like an impossible task or perhaps even disloyal to begin working through your grief and enter this next life chapter without them here. However, the task at hand is to allow yourself to have your pain witnessed and heard, where you can express your feelings wholeheartedly and begin to adjust to the world without them being physically here and begin to invest in your life again as you integrate the pain and the love. This might be through connecting with family and friends, exploring new things or ticking things off the bucket list you want shared. It is my belief that the best way to honour them is choosing to live how they would have hoped, whilst carrying the love you have for them in your heart. As Kessler once said, continuing to live again, to love that person after their death is loyalty. Loyalty isn't a denial of life, but an acknowledgement of the love we have for the person who died. Joy is still possible, happiness is still possible. I have witnessed the immense resilience, strength and hope people have during their darkest times and their ability to make meaning out of the most unimaginable circumstances. If you are feeling like you would like support with your grief and feeling lost and disconnected, please know the bereavement services is here to support you as you navigate your pain and loss. I would like to end by sharing my message of hope to you. As you steer through the tidal waves of grief, a loss you did not go in search for, but has come to you, I hope you are able to feel safe and supported and have your pain witnessed to carve out the pathway to healing. May you release the burden of guilt or regrets you might be holding. May you keep your heart open wide and receptive to what life brings you, both happy and sad. May you befriend hope and choose to celebrate life as you honour the one you love. Hi, my name is Dr Amy Birtwistle. I'm one of the specialists working with the palliative care team on the Central Coast. You may not have met me, but you are probably watching this because your loved one has been looked after by one or more of my colleagues. I feel rather underqualified to be addressing you all today, and I spent a lot of time wondering what I could say that would be of any value or comfort. This wondering led me to reflect on how, when people ask what I do for a living, and I tell them I'm a palliative care doctor, they usually say, I don't know how you do your job. But the truth is that I don't know how I could do any other job in medicine. So I would like to take this opportunity today to explain to you why it is that my job means so much to me why helping provide care to people like yourselves and your loved ones feels in fact an enormous privilege. That privilege is to be invited into the intimacy of people's lives, families and homes. To be allowed to share in the final precious months, weeks and days of people's lives. To be permitted to find some small way to help in the toughest of times. So thank you for allowing me and my colleagues this privilege. I am humbled every day by the people I meet at work people like your loved ones and yourselves. I am humbled by the patients I treat who are facing the inevitable outcome of our mortal lives, but with a more certain and shorter time frame than the rest of us. Humbled by the strength, vulnerability and honesty I have observed at this unimaginable time. By the shows of courage and personal growth I have seen when faced with such adversity. By the great acts of thoughtfulness I have witnessed when I would expect only self-consideration. I am humbled by the families, friends and carers I meet who are bravely accompanying their loved ones on this final stretch of life's journey. Humbled by their determination and advocacy in pursuit of optimal care. By their tenacity and resilience when faced with repeated obstacles. By the loving embrace they sustain whilst falling apart on the inside. And I am humbled by the boundless care and compassion shown by my colleagues in caring for your loved ones and yourselves. Daily I am left in awe at the power of love. I have seen love drive people to make health decisions that benefit others over themselves. I have seen love manifest as staunch shows of support for another's choices, despite inwardly wishing they would choose differently. I have seen love both in bedside vigils for days, sometimes weeks, and in reluctantly leaving a bedside to respect a wish to be alone. 
I have seen love repeatedly lead to great personal, emotional, practical and financial sacrifice in order to meet another's need. I believe this love, passed through the lens of suffering, shines a torch on some of the best human attributes. My work allows me to witness some amazing lengths people will go to to support those they love. I see people finding new depths of courage and stamina, exhibiting untold capacity to sit with suffering and acting in unbridled selflessness. But the flip side of all this love is the grief. And the greater the love, the greater the trauma, the greater the grief. Or as far more eloquently written by Jamie Anderson, Grief, I've learned, is really just love. It's all the love you want to give, but cannot. All that unspent love gathers up in the corner of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in that hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. So I think of you all now in your grief, and hope you know that we see what you did for your loved ones. How you loved, supported, and held them as they lived, and as they died. I hope that you are now, in your turn, allowing others to love, support and hold you. You have probably heard of the Kubler-Ross stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. Mixed in with this is often shock, pain and guilt, but there can also be moments of calm, hopefulness and even happiness. You have probably already realised that these stages are not reliable steps of emotional progress, but rather a tumbled chaotic bag of uncertainty. It's hard to know what feelings each new day of grieving will reveal. And then there is the unannounced punch of fresh, raw loss that can sometimes appear from nowhere. I wish I could say that this emotional roller coaster of grief will end, but like the love that never died, neither will the grief. However, I hope you may find some solace, as I have done, in Lois Tonkin's model of growing around grief. People think that grief slowly gets smaller with time. In reality, grief stays the same size, but life slowly begins to grow bigger around it. And so as your life without your loved ones inevitably starts to grow with the passing of time, with new memories, new events, new people, don't feel guilty that the grief no longer consumes you. It is still there, undiminished. And if your grief is feeling too heavy and dark for you to bear, which I imagine it will at times, please remember to reach out for the help and support we all take our turn to need, for it is your turn now. I would like to finish with the words of Liz Newman, who encompasses well our aim to treat all the patients and their families as unique, valued individuals who matter because they are who they are right to the end of their lives. The stages of grief take the stage, fighting for a chance to bask in the spotlight of your absence. Denial steps up, there's nothing to see here. It's a mistake, mistake, go home. Nothing to see, it's only a mistake, frantically calling for the production to cease. Anger storms the stage, pushes denial away, pushes everyone away, yelling, it's not fair, no one understands, no one stays. Scrutinizing the words and comfort thrown her way, none of it matters, none of it changes the outcome. Anger is easier than pain, anger is easier. But bargaining sees a window and asks anger, did you call? Did you do enough? Could you have been there sooner? Were you too late? So quick to anger, but were you quick to action? It doesn't sound like it, it doesn't sound like it. Depression asks the director to cut the lights so she has time to sit in the darkness, to get used to the lack, the loss, the light that's gone forever, the light that can't come back, the light that hurts when its memory hits the shattered surface of her heart. Dim the lights, there is no light. Acceptance waits, sits in the dark alongside depression, just sits down next to her and waits, lets her cry, lets her ask why, lets her process, sits beside her as long as she needs, as long as it takes. And when they are ready, acceptance gently welcomes them all to take a seat, to watch a lifetime of memories dance alongside them, the grief intermingling with a deep gratitude for each moment that she was granted. Moments darkened by grief, but never taken away. Moments that comfort and remain long after they're gone. Memories that outlast the pain so that the curtain may fall along with the tears, so that the stages may come and go and the grief may ebb and flow, 
and we may face emotions along the way we don't yet know. But there's no timeline or prescribed stages, no too fast or too slow. And we'll hold the hurt and the healing in both hands, knowing how much this part mattered. Our unique pain, our unique process, it all mattered. We're going to take a pause now to reflect and remember those who have died with the placing of flowers into a glass vase, symbolizing the life and memory of someone we wish to remember and honor. We invite you to take this time to honor and remember the person you cared about. These elements signify your memories, all those thoughts and feelings of the person you cared about. So let this be a recognition of all that you shared, a tribute of life and love in the face of your loss. You may wish to create your own symbol to honor the person you cared about and loved and miss. Thank you. When we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have a joy, we crave to share. When we have decisions that are difficult to make. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer at the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the rising of the sun and at its setting, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now part of us as we remember them. God of all comfort, we give thanks for each of our loved ones whom we remember today, for all the ways in which their lives touched ours, for the difficult as well as the good times, for the ways in which their lives and their love continue to be with us. In our sadness and with thanksgiving, we will remember them. Amen. Thank you for choosing to view our memorial service. We hope it's been helpful to remember, honour and reflect on the life of the person you've lost. But sometimes loss can be overwhelming and the service may have evoked some difficult feelings or memories. If so, there are organisations that can offer help. Here are some contact details that you may find useful. Thank you.